For me, kayak fishing is simple. A boat, a paddle, a fishing rod, and unspoiled water. The fish are big. Chaos is beautiful. It's angling's addictive final frontier, and I'm hooked. I'm Drew Gregory, and this is Hooked on Wild Waters. Drew Gregory's Hooked on Wild Waters has been brought to you by River Bassin Tournament Trail. No egos, just fun. Jackson Kayak, we make fun. GoPro, be a hero. Bending branches, pretty smart paddles. Orion Coolers, never lose your cool. 13 Fishing, make your own luck. Z-Man Lures, the science and art of fishing. I was so excited that this season we're gonna be doing river bassin, and one of the first rivers that came to my mind is the world-class river I'm on right now, the New River in West Virginia. I knew I wanted to share with you guys different rivers, different environments, and different species. So today, we're gonna to focus on catching hopefully some big smallmouth bass. Maybe if we luck into a, a muskie or walleye, that's even better, but no doubt about it, the New River is one of the world-class places you need to visit if you're a river bassin fan. So we got weather coming in, I gotta get on the water, so let's go do this. I mean, was I bummed that it rained the day before and, and the water's high and flowing really fast? A little bit, but at the same time, you gotta go when you've planned to go. And you go fishing whenever you have it planned, maybe it's Saturday, Sunday, or whatever. If it rains, you're not going? Of course not. You're gonna put on the rain jacket, you're gonna get out there, and that's what we did today. And it's just gonna be that much more of a challenge, but it's gonna make any fish we catch that much more exciting. So when water gets high in any river system, you actually wanna look on satellite imagery and see if you can find a place maybe that has a lot of islands. And that's gonna obviously give the fish current breaks when the water gets up. So that's where I went first. I actually head into some spots that had a bunch of down trees, islands, and I'm making casts. And you can even see some grass that's submerged. And of course, smallmouth bass love to hang out in the grass. So I'm slinging my baits in there, and sure enough, wham, I get bit. It's a nice, solid fish, a great way to start the day, and maybe, just maybe, the start to a pattern. Not bad at all. Feisty little guy. All right, the spinnerbait is working. Such a good lure in stained water. Chartreuse spinnerbait, you cannot go wrong. New River Smallmouth, right here. The New River has a lot of grass in it in this section and some ledges. And so one thing that I was able to do, especially with wearing good sunglasses like Smith Optics, I could see right down in there and I could see the submerged grass. You can just see this very dark shadow looking thing underneath the water about this high. Sometimes the grass would actually come out of the water, but there was a severe drop off just a ledge. It looked like someone just took a knife and just cut the river like that and it dropped off and water was swooping down right by that ledge. And sure enough, a perfect ambush point for any bass to be. I'm catching fish there. Wham, one, two, three, bam, bam, bam. And I just keep changing lures. Every time I change the lure, I throw it in there, I catch another fish. There we go, that's a better fish too. That's a better fish right there. It's been a while since I felt a little bit better tug like this. I'm bring around over here. Come on. It's not a giant, but it is a good fish. Man, these smallmouth fights so hard. Just lift her up and in. There we go. About 15, 16 inches. All right, right where she should have been. They're getting bigger. I'm telling you, we're gonna get something at least 18, 19, 20 inches eventually. I'm making my way downstream, continuing to look for areas that have grass or current seams, especially behind islands. This one spot happened to have both, so I knew high probability for a big smallmouth bass here. I throw in, and sure enough, I get hit. I get nailed real hard. There he is. Ah, I missed him. He hit it though, he was there where he should have been. I was like, okay, real quick, I grab another rod, sling it in there, and sure enough, you know, typical smallmouth aggression, she nails it. I think I have like a giant, and it just never ceases to amaze me how hard these fish fight. I missed him a few times, it's a good fish too. I knew there was one there if I just stuck with it. Almost makes me want to take out the net for this one, but I don't think it's quite, ooh, that big. Come on. Stay on, stay on. 
There we go, yeah, that's a solid fish. Getting a little bigger. This one might be 17. Inching up, inching up. It's a 17 inch fish, which hey, super proud of. That's a nice fish, but it's not this giant trophy smallmouth I thought it was. It's one reason we love smallmouth, but I have a feeling if I can keep this pattern going downstream, even though the water's high, it's a tough day, I may just be able to catch one even bigger. So you can see on this fish, you know, the fins, look here, this tattered fins that are broken right here, especially on this one here. I mean, that definitely is a sign of spawning. You know that they're spawning when you see their fins like that, especially if they get red. And that's definitely a clue that we are in that transitional stage. Some fish are spawning. Talking to the locals, some fish have already spawned. So we're in that weird transition stage, but we're still finding some fish and they're definitely getting bigger like this one. This one is 17 inches, a solid fish. Let's just keep creeping up. And maybe we'll get one even bigger. Beautiful fish. Let's let her go. You know, just as I get done letting this 17 inch fish go, I hear something on the bank, somebody yelling something to me. And I'm like, okay, What's going on? I gotta check this out. Look over here. And this guy just totally randomly says, yeah, actually I did. <laughs> That's funny. You just never know where you're gonna run into fans of Jackson Kayak and Hooked on Wild Waters. That was pretty cool. These guys here building this cool little house on the island. They're apparently Jackson Kayak and Drew Gregory fans. They got coosas, they said. That was pretty funny. He yells out at me, did you design that boat? I'm like, well, yeah, sorta. <laughs> Names on the side of it. Me and the, the whole team at Jackson Kayak, obviously. Um, we got some great folks over there working on the kayaks. Uh, Tony Lee, our head, head R&D, boat architect and designer, does an awesome job. Damon Bungard, our product manager. Brad Cisco, man, we just have a great team over there that makes some great products, and it's good to see people out here enjoying them. This section of the river happens to be part of a national park. Now something's gotta be pretty amazing to be considered a national park. So to learn more about the river, I spoke with park ranger Richard Altair. He's gonna teach us more. You know, your new river is sort of the unique river in two facts. They think it's one of the oldest, continu is the oldest continuously flowing river in North America. And one of the smaller number of rivers in North America, major ones that flow south to north. It's coming out of North Carolina, Virginia into West Virginia. The Sandstone Visitor Center here, it is our visitor center. We're highlighting the whole watershed of the New River. Our theme was not just the 55 miles of New River we protect in the park, it's the whole New River watershed from Blowing Rock, North Carolina, Virginia, down into West Virginia. So we're really showing you not just our area, but everything that ties in with the New River here, the watershed. One of the new things about the New River for boating is we're in the upper part of the New River here at Sandstone. It's the wider part of the river, not as many rapids, better for fishing also up this way. But a lot of people have the misconception that the lower New, where they do the uh, commercial whitewater rafting, that's the quote dangerous part. If I don't go in the lower gorge, the four and five class rapids, I'm pretty safe on the upper part of the New. And that's true if you have solid intermediate skills, because this is a big, wide, full volume river. We have anywhere you go, you're not gonna go very far on the upper part between a one one to two to three class rapid. And it's not for beginner boaters. You wanna have someone who knows the river with you or be at least a, feel like an intermediate boater if you get on any section of the new river. Like I said, big, powerful, wide river here. The current, even in the flat water, if you're floating down this river, you'll say, wow, that current, yeah, it's really strong even when you're not in the rapids there. So you wanna have some skill level here. It's not beginner level when you're fishing, but the upper part is far better for the fishing. The lower part, you're you know coming in and out of rapids, solid four and five class rapids. It's more for the thrill of the rapids there. We can prepare you for a trip down the river. We have a, a river guide waterproof map that goes in the boat with you about all the rapids, uh, put-ins, take-outs of the area, natural cultural history of the area. We can fix you up with any kind of information, water levels, what's happening on the river that day you're going out there to get you the water levels there, any kind of maps information. A lot of good natural and cultural history facts about the New River too, along with just helping you get out fishing or exploring just white watering also. So if you're considering fishing the New River Gorge National River or any national river, be sure to stop in at the local park because there'll be a ranger just like Richard who's able to provide you information and a booklet you can flip through that explains history of the river. It's got maps on the river, areas need to look out for, any obstacles. Hey, look, it's all gonna help you catch more fish and wild waters and do it safely. I've caught some really good fish today, but things are about to get a little bit more challenging. I look up and the sky is really gray. It's starting to rain 
And of course, we're in the section of river now that's got the bigger rapids. So I'm first and foremost, just wanted to make sure I get out of here safe and sound and alive, but I still wanna catch a big fish. So if it's gonna happen, it needs to happen soon. So you can see there's a sign right here. It's, we're entering the black bass catch and release area, which is something pretty cool that um, the West Virginia DNR has done. They've implemented this section of 12 miles long and basically just what it says, it's catch and release only, it's a trophy section. So they're really trying to obviously promote the fishery and the sport of actually catching, you know, these bass and releasing them, mostly smallmouth bass here, obviously. So let's hope we can catch and release a big one ourselves. So I hate to stop on the river and retie lures, but I'm telling you, it's a smart thing to do. You gotta make yourself do it. And that's what I'm doing now. I can tell the volume of the river's higher than I expected, so I'm putting on a few heavier baits, a few bigger baits. I want to catch some big fish. We've caught small ones already, plenty of small ones. We're here for the big trophy smallmouth. So let's go big and hopefully we won't go home. I don't know, this, this rain might send us home. Hopefully not. I make my way down this one rapid section and it makes the perfect eddy, you know, this nice calm area where the fish have been hanging out. And so of course, I take my Z-Man streaks because I see a bunch of sticks and low-hanging logs and I wanna skip it right underneath these trees. I skip it, make the perfect cast. And if there was ever a time I should have been rewarded for a good cast, this was it. This smallmouth bass hits it so hard. Oh yeah, there we go, there we go. This might be what we came for right here. And I could tell just by the weight of this fish, this is a solid fish. I don't want to get my hopes up. I've been fooled before in these smallmouth bass. Oh, my drag, I gotta tighten it up. Oh yeah, it's a good fish, good fish. But eventually, as I'm fighting this fish in, I get a glimpse and I can see this is that trophy 19, 20 inch smallmouth bass that I've come to the New River Gorge for. Oof. Stay on, stay on. Oh, come on, get in. Woohoo, yes! That's what you come to West Virginia for, right there on the New River. This is a nice, nice fish. She might go 19, 20 inches. <laughs> Look how beautiful this fish is. This is unbelievable. What a fish. I just love smallmouth. Man, these are awesome fish. Ah, check it out, GoPro. Smallmouth bass are known to be one of the prettiest black bass species there are. And this particular fish definitely shows that off to you guys. You can just see how beautiful this fish is. You know, this is what makes a smallmouth different. It's got the smaller mouth than a large mouth. You can see when it closes its mouth, its jaw doesn't go beyond its eye. It's got these vertical bars all over it. They call them bronze backs quite often because you can see they're kind of brown and bronze. So what an awesome fish. In my opinion, the fastest and the hardest fighting of all the black bass. Let's let it go, because again, don't forget, we are in the catch and release section, right? She nailed that streak. Man, I skipped it right under that tree perfectly. You gotta love it when the plan works out. All right, let's let her go. As I reflect back on the river and the gorge I was in, with the amazing cliffs, the big rapids, the incredible volume of water, and of course the trophy smallmouth, you can clearly see why the new river continues to have me hooked on wild waters. Drew Gregory's Hooked on Wild Waters has been brought to you by River Bassin Tournament Trail. No egos, just fun. Jackson Kayak, we make fun. GoPro, be a hero. Bending branches, pretty smart paddles. Orion Coolers, never lose your cool. 13 Fishing, make your own luck. Z-Man Lures, the science and art of fishing.